Welcome to Weight Loss and Wellness for Real, the podcast where people like you get the practical solutions and support you need to permanently lose the physical and mental weight so you can feel better and live the life you want in the body and mind you want. If you're looking to overcome your stress eating, overeating, binging behaviors, and move to a place of freedom with food and your body, you're in the right place. Hello, everybody. I hope you are all doing really well today, whatever day it is that you're listening to this. Um, Hopefully, you have implemented over this past week one or two thought work or behavior work uh, strategies from some of the past episodes. And if you have, I just encourage you to keep going with those little changes because as we know, they really add up to big change over some time. I'm going to talk today about sleep, which probably is not a surprise since um, we we are hearing about sleep from every nook and cranny of the health and wellness field and how important sleep is. Um, and I was kind of excited to just speak on this a little bit in this podcast because I have some pretty strong feelings and thoughts about this topic. And so like I said, lately, uh, almost all I'm hearing from my usual sources of health and well-being is, is this idea of how important our sleep is for absolutely everything in our lives. And yes, I do believe this. Our sleep is very important for our health and well-being. But, and here's the but. The more you hear the message, you have to go get good sleep in order to be okay in life, many of us will become more anxious about sleep and this will actually reduce your ability to sleep. So I'm going to talk about how to take all this information about sleep and understand, yes, it is very important, the research is true, all those things and be able to think a little bit differently about sleep so that you can actually get the sleep. So if if you listen to this podcast or uh, you're a client of mine, you know I feel very strongly about when someone puts information out there about health and well-being, I want a solution along with that. I want the how discussed, you know. I so often, you know, you'll find information sources you listen to and, you know, they're telling you, "Well, you need to do this and you need to do this for your health and your well-being," but they do not talk about how to actually uh, get there, how to actually follow through on those behaviors, how to actually make those changes. So giving me a blanket statement that some behavior is imperative to be healthy and live a fulfilled life to me comes off as a little ridiculous. You know, I want to hear how do we do it? Give us the practical strategies. Um, okay. So that's just my little rant, but I, I am trained in CBTI, which is cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, which is a protocol or a way, a way of therapy that is research-based to help clients alleviate insomnia and or get them into more and deeper sleep patterns. So it, it focuses on a really structured approach to practicing specific sleep hygiene practices, which I, I will also go over in this at the end. But the main idea with this is the key to helping people sleep better is shifting their idea of, I have to try hard to sleep, to allowing sleep to happen. So again, the idea is shifting the idea for the individual of, I have to try hard to sleep, to allowing sleep to happen. You can kind of get the different energy feelings behind both of those sentences. I have to try hard to sleep. There's sort of this grasping, this straining, this struggle. Whereas if you are in a space of thinking and feeling, I'm allowing sleep to happen, there's a lot more reduction in anxiety. The the feeling, the energy behind that statement is much more calm, reassuring, um, less stress. So, you know, I... I just want you to understand that how we think about sleep is actually what contributes more so to our sleeping patterns and if we're going to get good sleep. 
if I have a person who comes to me to help them with sleep and they wear a wearable to track sleep, so you know what I'm talking about, like the Aura Ring or um, some of the Fitbits, I believe, do it. I think Garmin has one you can wear. Um, and they come in and they say, okay, my device is telling me I'm not getting good sleep. So they are always reminding themselves they're not getting good sleep. So guess how they feel? They feel tired. They start to feel stressed before trying to go to sleep because they're concerned now that they're not getting good sleep. Um, they go throughout their day focused on how they're not getting good sleep um, or not getting deep sleep. And this sets up their brain to create feelings of anxiety. So remember, again, every episode I'm talking about thoughts, feelings, actions, thoughts, feelings, behaviors. We have a thought, creates a feeling. The feeling has a chemical cocktail attached to it, which is the sensation we feel in our body with a feeling. And then we are typically um, moved to behave from those feelings if we're not um, if we're not paying attention to that, if we're not on purpose uh, behaving differently. So you can see how if someone gets into the thought pattern of sleep is so important um, or they're wearing a wearable that says they're not getting good sleep or not getting perfect sleep and their anxiety around sleep goes up and goes up and goes up, then what happens is that person starts to really have feelings of all that anxiousness and and that actually is going to keep them awake. It's also longer. It's going to be tougher for them to fall asleep and they're also not going to get as good a sleep um, as they could have. So if you have a problem falling asleep, staying asleep, or getting into deep sleep, first thing I recommend to clients who are experiencing this is to stop wearing your wearable. Stop tracking your sleep, okay? It's <clears throat> it's really important because if you start to feel anxious about sleep, you need to do everything to get rid of that anxious feeling. And that means hopping in to the thought cycle because our thoughts are what trigger our feelings. So stop wearing the wearable. And actually, um, typically within a day or two, these particular clients will report that they're sleeping better. Like they just take their wearable off and that first night they'll report they slept way better. <clears throat> our thoughts play such a huge part in our sleep quality along with everything else in our life. And again, the the paradox here is the more you believe your sleep is the end all be all to your health and well-being, the more sleep will evade you. So really taking away the wearables um is a, if you're wearing one to track sleep is really a good first step in being able to sleep more. Now, I'm not saying if you're someone who's wearing a wearable to kind of get information on your sleep, at first and um or for another reason and you're sleeping fine like you know the the wearable device the information it gives the next morning does not um trigger any negative thoughts or anxious thoughts about sleep you're you're good to go um but what i'm saying is if you're wearing a wearable and you're having difficulties sleeping uh taking the wearable off is really important you want to wake up starting to assess on your own how you feel um, instead of, you know, here's what can happen. You, you wear that wearable, you get the information the next morning. You you actually wake up before you get the information and you feel really good. You feel great. And you're like, oh my gosh, I think I, you know, I had a pretty decent night's sleep. I maybe woke up once or twice, but I feel really good and rested. Your wearable then tells you, you had a horrible night's sleep. You never got into deep sleep, you know, something like that. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, maybe I am tired or maybe I don't feel well. And this is how our thoughts then really start to affect our entire day. So those are just some things to consider. The biggest issue or idea here is that how we think and believe about our sleep creates the type of sleep we get or don't get. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to go over some sleep hygiene strategies um, that you can start to implement immediately to improve your sleep. So these are going to be behavioral strategies um, that I am going to go over, but I'm also going to teach you how to think about sleep in order to get deeper and better sleep. So here's what happens when you listen to a podcast or read an article about the importance of sleep or 
And here's the biggie. Again, you use that device to track your sleep. You, you take in a belief about sleep. And this belief then throws up thoughts in the brain that can create feelings. And remember, along with feelings, again, going to repeat it, come sensations in your body from these feelings, behavior comes about. So if we believe we must get eight to nine hours of uninterrupted sleep to be okay, uh, then when sleep doesn't come easily or you wake up in the middle of the night, you're going to feel lots of anxious feelings about sleeping which actually creates the poor sleep quality. So this is the chain of events. It makes sense that checking our thoughts about sleep is important to figure out any sleep issues. Starting to try on thoughts or sentences about sleep that are more things like, even when I think I'm not getting great great sleep, I know that I'm fine. I will continue to function. Deep sleep eventually comes. Every individual person is different. It's possible that the type of sleep I am getting works for me right now. It's all I need. Remember, we are wanting to use thoughts that create a feeling of allowing sleep to happen and not, I need to try hard to sleep. Stop trying so hard and focus your attention and on-purpose thinking thoughts like, I allow sleep to happen. My body knows what to do. I can trust it. I can allow it just to happen when it happens. When we think thoughts like this, um, you know, it it releases the pressure and the anxiety around sleeping and creates a calm space where we can just allow it to happen whenever. And again, the paradox with this type of on-purpose thinking comes more refreshing sleep. So this is the foundation of getting better, deeper sleep. It's how you think about sleep. After you have this started, you can then focus on some behavioral sleep hygiene techniques. And there are many, but I'm going to give you just a few to get you started. Uh, So some of the sleep hygiene basics, going to bed at the same time every night and waking up at the same time every morning. So this really helps to set you up for deeper sleep. More, more restful sleep as your circadian rhythm normalizes. So it doesn't seem to matter too much um, from the research out there right now what time you go to bed, early or late, but just that it happens at the same time every night and wake up happens at the same time every morning. Um, another idea is a good evening wind down routine before you plan to go to bed. So, so kind of writing out, structuring out Uh, a routine before bed can really be helpful to help you get good sleep. So things like a bath or time to read some, you know, giving yourself time to read something easy, by the way, not something, um, you know, super, uh, what would I say? Like, um, violent or inner, it doesn't even, violent isn't the thing, but like energetic. So not something that raises your emotions. So reading something, interesting, passive, maybe some good fiction, um, something like that, or watching something relaxing. Um, again, nothing that raises emotions too high. So, you know, I would not recommend listening to the news, um, no crime shows, no, um, you know, heavy mystery, um, things more like, well, ideas would be things more like travel shows or a comedy of some sort. Um, and so, After you do some of that in the evening, then leaving yourself time to um, journal or pray or do a mindfulness technique or practice a breathing protocol that you can do while you're in bed. So while you're in bed, doing some things that really um, bring that relaxation down. So this time really does allow you to clear your mind before you sleep and creates a more relaxed environment to fall asleep in. And the journaling for some of you, you know, I know some people just hate journaling or don't want to do it, but if you are a person who has an anxious mind, so who ruminates before sleep, and that's often what'll keep you from sleeping, then journaling uh, right when you get into bed is a really good idea of just downloading thoughts. So You're just simply writing what's on your mind, what are the worries, and you're just writing them down. You don't have to find a solution. There's nothing like that, but just writing them down. There is something that happens when we transfer our worries, our ruminating thoughts onto paper, especially through our handwriting. 
um, that really then it's like, okay, there it is in my journal or my notebook. And now it's not in my brain and your brain relaxes a little bit more. And so sometimes for some people, like I said, with those ruminating thoughts before bed, um, doing that practice can help immensely. And then uh, taking a little bit of quiet time to do a breathing protocol. Um, And if you're relaxing to go to sleep, a good breathing protocol would be something like breathing um, into through the nose, breathing through the nose for maybe a count of two or three and holding it for the same amount of time and then exhaling double the time. So if, if you're going to inhale for a count of two, you hold the breath for a count of two and you exhale for a count of four. And doing that over and over again will often bring uh, good sleep as well. So the idea is clearing your mind through journaling if that's an issue for you. And then doing some of some sort of um, slowing down relaxation techniques, so mindfulness, uh, the breathing, um, praying, those sorts of things. And there's quite a few more techniques out there um, to get good deep sleep. And so those are just a couple of the ones that I see working for clients most often, um, having that routine, and then also the timing of when you go to sleep and when you wake up. My favorite recommendation for someone allowing sleep to happen, and I got into this practice um, about, it I don't know, a year or two ago, um, <clears throat> but is to talk to them about yoga nidra. So this is a specific mindfulness technique that you do to fall asleep as well as to replace sleep with deep rest. So this technique is used to not only fall asleep and relax, but to actually induce a different brainwave that corresponds to deep rest brainwave states. So the idea is that even if you can't sleep, this technique will replace your sleep with deep rest and gives you that same rested state as you would get from sleeping. So this technique truly has been a godsend for me and getting deep rest even when I'm struggling with sleep. So even when I'm not sleeping... And as well for many clients who have recommended this, recommended this to, um, have had really, really good results using this. And again, that's called yoga nidra. Um, you're not actually doing yoga. You are, it's a mindfulness technique. You are lying in bed um, and you can YouTube it uh, and try out. There's tons of them out there. And so you can try out a few and find one that maybe fits for you. The even bigger picture here is is that when you understand you can still get deep rest without perfect sleep, so by using yoga nidra, you understand, okay, I'm still going to get rest even if I don't fall asleep. You sleep more because there is less anxiety around trying to get sleep because you know you can use a technique to bring you rest. So again, the technique is great, but more than that, this allows you to shift away from your anxious thoughts about sleep. Another thing to think about in regards to sleep is that everyone is individual with their sleep. And also to understand that your sleep patterns, um, how deep you sleep, all those things will shift with different life events, uh, different ages in your life, changing hormones, um, definitely having uh, young children, having kids changes our sleep for a while. Our, it's like just our bodies are designed to handle these shifts and changes with sleep. This means that your optimal sleep may be four hours of sleep, a wake up period, and then back to sleep. And knowing this is okay, someone else's best sleep might be eight hour, or six hours straight. Um, someone else might be nine hours straight. It's just important to really take this thought or belief in so anxious thoughts around sleep begin to dissipate so you can get more sleep. Okay, so to recap, if you struggle with sleep and you're wearing a wearable that tracks your sleep, stop wearing it immediately. Yes, sleep is very important for our mental, emotional, and physical health. And to get better, deeper, restorative sleep, you need to shift away from anxious thoughts about sleep and think on purpose thoughts about sleep that allow sleep to happen and stop trying hard to sleep. Once you have your thoughts about sleep in your control and and you're practicing thinking them on purpose, then put in 
into practice some sleep hygiene behavioral strategies that are doable for you. So again, when you do choose some sleep hygiene strategies, start small, make them very doable, and start doing them every day. If you're suffering with sleep issues and you feel you need more structured help to heal your sleep life, um, feel free to get in touch with me at my website, heatherheinen.com. I know this was a quickie, but hopefully it was to the point and gives you enough practical uh, thought strategies and behavior strategies to start to put into place if you're dealing with any kind of sleep issues. If you found anything useful from this, would you please um, either take a screenshot of it and post it to your social media and or share it with someone you think could benefit from it? And also, if you would subscribe to the podcast, I'd really appreciate it. You can head over to my social media for more resources. You can find me on Instagram at Heinen Counseling and Coaching. Again, name is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. Once you're there, feel free to uh, message me or comment on a post with any questions you might have about all things weight loss, wellness, optimizing health, nutrition, thought work, etc. I do include some of your questions throughout my podcast episodes. I also have a recipes only page on Instagram at peak protein recipes. Peak is spelled P E A K. It's just a place where all recipes are high protein, uh, low carb. So if you're one of those people, um, going a little low carb or, uh, needing to get more protein in your diet, it's a good place to get some very simple and tasty recipes. And if you keep listening right now, you're going to get a little bit more information on how my clients take a deeper dive on these topics with me through online programs and coaching. It's where you get the actual structured lessons, worksheets, journal prompts, support, and coaching behind all the information I'm putting out there. And thank you so much for listening. And I hope that you will put into practice some strategies, thought strategies and behavior strategies uh, to get to your goals, whether that's losing weight, improving your health, but mostly just living the life you've been dreaming about in the body you've been dreaming about. I hope you are finding something useful from these episodes and this podcast. And if so, please share it with someone else in your life you feel it could benefit. This podcast is also now monetized. So if you really feel you are getting a lot from it and want to help keep it going, please go to the episode show notes. You can just scroll down from wherever you're listening. You'll see a description of the episode and then you will see it says support this podcast. And then there's a link you can click on. You can click on that link and that's where you can support the podcast. Even the smallest donation, like 99 cents, helps to keep me producing the podcast. And to those of you who have donated, I really, really appreciate the support. I really do appreciate all of you listening and sharing the space with me. Again, just very thankful for all of you. Did you know you can find a lot more help from me on my website? Go to heatherheinen.com. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. And get in touch with questions on all things I offer, like online courses for overeating, weight loss, goal attainment, and also my coaching and counseling services. Mm -hmm.